Hello, and welcome once again to Family Historian. My name is Stephen Conti. Tonight we are going to combine the two joys of my life, antiques and genealogy. And yes, there is a connection. And joining me on tonight's show, I am very honored to have as my guest a wonderful guy. His name is Don Bushel. Don and his lovely wife, Jeanette, are the proud owners of an antique shop in Andover, New Jersey, known as Gray Barn Antiques. And on tonight's show, Don and myself are going to teach you how to use antiques in finding your ancestors. And now let's welcome antique dealer and my very good friend, Don Bushel. Don, welcome to my show. Stephen, thank you for having me. Good. You know, Don, looking around me, I feel like I'm on the Antiques Roadshow with all these antiques haunting me here. Mm. Before we get into the antiques, uh, Don, of our show, you have a very famous ancestor who was very famous in the annals of science, and he yes. was born in England. Mm -hmm. Can you tell our viewers what his name was and what he accomplished in his life? Certainly. His name's uh, Adam Sedgwick. He's from Dent, Yorkshire. He was born in March of 1785, and he was a noted geologist. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the founders of modern geology, and he himself had a famous student, a Charles Darwin. That's right. Yes, I read something about that. Now, when he became very famous in geology, yes. not genealogy, geology, mm -hmm. okay, and he is related to you on your father's side. That's correct. My grandmother was Elizabeth Agnes Sedgwick. I see. Okay, that's your grandma. We mm -hmm. have some photographs of Don with his grandma, Elizabeth Sedgwick, and we do have some of her antiques right here. Now, his relationship with Darwin, of all people, mm -hmm. They were friends at first. In fact, they remained friends until the day he died, despite their disagreements based upon evolution of species and the fact that my relative was fairly against those. Right, right. He was a very religious man. Very much so. And then the evolution of species went against the teachings of the church, so they had a disagreement based upon that. Right, right. And you said you had some articles about that disagreement or something. It was written. The up. letter at times he laughed, at times he cried, till his you know he laughed till his sides hurt. Mm -hmm. But the overall message behind his teachings went directly against Darwin's evolution of species and natural selection in, in particular. Right now, Elizabeth Agnes Sedgwick, correct, is your paternal grandmother, your father's mother. mother. Yes. Okay. And she was a collector of antiques, yeah. and we do have some of her antiques with us tonight. And uh, we'll start with this right here. Uh, where are these from? These are uh, a herd of elephants. A herd here. of elephants. She had that as long as I can remember back. She used to keep it upon her bookshelf next to her television, and mm -hmm. it was one of her favorite things. And you inherited this from, from Grandma. Yeah, my father knew that I always had you know, such a close relationship with her. Right. She was a big part of you know my youth and made sure that I got things that mattered to her because uh -huh. of our connection. And you told me something very comical about these elephants yes, she, and her politics. Uh, uh, as far as pol politics goes, she was a diehard Democrat. And for her love of elephants, it was kind of a quiet irony. Very ironic. Yes, yes. yes. Now we have here, these look like very Art Deco bookends. Yep. Uh, that she collected. She collected those and she kept all of her favorite books right between them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you have other things at home that, that you inherited from Elizabeth Sedgwick? Sure, larger pieces that couldn't come here today. Right. But, you know, things that definitely spoke of the family and the history and things that always let us see back to where we came from. Right. So you can really do some genealogy research by having these, we call these three-dimensional archives in genealogy. A three-dimensional archive is a fancy way of saying antique. Yes. And that's what we genealogists call these, three-dimensional archives. Now, you have a wheel here. Oh, my word. It's got some weight to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And what on that's earth is this? Interesting piece. It's from the Philadelphia Gear Company. 
It's very old and it was used, it's one of many different sizes that they would use to make real gears of metal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. around that piece. Right, and around what year was this made, if oh, you my. remember? That one's probably at least 40 or 50 years old. Right, right. Now, my grandfather was a shipbuilder and, mm -hmm. and a plumber when he came over, so that's what brought that into our collections. Right, so an antique has to be at least is it 50 years old? Well, you'll have vintage at 25, and antique is typically closer to 100. Right. Now, in your shop, mm -hmm. what periods do you have in your shop? Because I've been there many, many times, mm -hmm. and many of the props that you see here tonight are from uh, this antique shop in Andover, New Jersey, and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, what periods do you... Uh, collect and sell? We run, as they say, the whole gauntlet. We have multiple dealers, so we encourage them to have more of the antique aged th mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. We do accept some of the newer ones so long as they have cross collectivity right. to them, but we try to skew on the heavier, older side. Because I did buy something from you uh, from the Victorian era. Yes. So you have 1890s and you have some Civil War things, I'm there sure. There are some Civil War epaulets that one of my vendors has got. They're in really neat condition. And the collectibles go up until around what year? Oh, well, I mean, collectibles can be as early as pop culture right. prohibits. So, right, you know, 50s, and 60s. Yep, we have a guy who's got fantastic trains. Some of them are pre-war. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of them are newer, you know, 60s, 70s. Right. You know, and it really, you know, it speaks to everyone because they all have a connection to the past in that regard. Right, and you know something, we're talking about antiques and genealogy. I did have a wonderful experience in uh, an antique shop in Somerville, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I found a yearbook from the year 19, a high school yearbook from the year 1931, and I'm thumbing through it, and I see my aunt in there when she was 17 years old, and when she died, I brought the yearbook to the funeral parlor, and I gave it to my cousins, her, her kids, right. and it was a great... Uh, uh, excitement for them to see their mother at that age. Sure. You know, and sometimes you might find your family Bible in an antique shop. Have you heard this before? I had. You, you know, I talked with a few people of it. I think you were one of them. Yes, that's right. That's right. Now, you have something interesting right here. This is from the periods of the when your grandmother era was yeah. around. Yeah, she came over in the early 20s. And what, England. what is this now? This, this is, is depression glass. It's got uranium in it. Okay. And it was also called Vaseline glass because Vaseline, the product, was actually, you know, transported in right. and sold in glasses right. that had this. And it had uranium in it. So if you put a black light on it, it, Isn't that it something? glows because of the uranium. is trace elements. You it wouldn't see harm that, you. That, that's the uranium in there. That's correct. Okay, great. Now, I did bring some of my antiques along uh, that will give you some clues about who your ancestors uh, were. And I have something right here. This is what they call, Don, this is a Bible casket. Hmm. As you know, the family Bible was the most prized possession in the family. And these are usually made of leather. They were usually made of leather, but I have this one in wood. And sometimes the family's initials will be on the top of the Bible here, okay? So I have my family Bible right in here in this Bible casket or book box. Nice. And this was given to me. I inherited this from uh, my grandfather. So this is our family Bible. Um, other antiques that you can use, Don. Do you have any, like, uh, you've seen dinnerware, of course. Dinnerware very often will have a family crest. Right. A family crest, and we have some examples uh, to show you uh, with the family crest or the family initial. I've seen okay. both, yes. Uh, here's one uh, with the initial D on it, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, these will give you a clue of who the family was. Uh, we have another one with the initial M, and then we have another one here. This is the family crest, and I've seen some of these at your shop. Yes, we've had them, and things of that nature usually don't last long because everybody appreciates the history behind it. Right. So now, if you do your genealogy research, and I, I know there are books of heraldic art, they call it heraldic art, mm -hmm. you can match it up 
with the dinnerware. Yes. So that may have belonged to your family. So it's all kind of detective work. Right. Right. Okay. Um, again, the family crests are very important on dinnerware, and these are for very select families, I would say, very wealthy families. Yeah, it's not that common, so you would expect it's usually a more economically favorable situation. Right. Did the Sedgwicks have anything like that, that you know I'm of? I'm not quite aware of that. I know that there's old china sets that have handed down through the generation, but I don't recall any of them having that. Right, right. Yeah. Now, what about... Um, what other areas would have initials on them or monograms? What other items? Oh, signet rings, for example. Uh-huh. And I have one right here, oh, a signet do. ring. Oh, that's very handsome. Okay. With the initial S. But this was not S for Stephen from this Stephen here, another Stephen who was an ancestor of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, we have some pictures of rings that I brought along mm -hmm. that will show the signet rings that will show either a, uh, a signature or, you know, an, an initial or even a, uh, um, a family coat of arms. Nice. Also, uh, would you say silverware? Silverware would definitely be one of the things that would have family in initials or crests. Okay, and we do have some examples uh, of silverware um, with the initial H on them. I have those and some other ones as well. Right, family portraits would also, you know, be, you know, things that they would hand down. Right. Now, what about um, uh, books and things like that? I'm not as familiar in that regard, but I believe that there are, you know, tomes, you know, that were handed through. Think things that were... Leather-bound, usually. And sometimes books were given as uh, a gift sure. to people. Okay, very That's good. Right. Okay. Um, this is very interesting, and I do have something else to show our viewers. Uh, talking about dishes, okay, yes. chinaware, dinnerware. I was doing research on a family that were very prominent beekeepers, hmm. and this is their plate, Oh, the bee on it. This was their uh, family dinnerware, nice. chinaware, okay? So you can see the pr person's profession on here as well. Right. Very good. Very smart. Right. Now, um... Getting back to the Sedgwick family, okay, do you have anything else to tell us about that you may have inherited from the Sedgwicks? Uh, probably a passion for hiking and rocks. I, I, think I, that, I really, right. the geology, in fact, we have a son, my wife and I, he's 11, and he seems to be a budding geologist as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not genealogist, geologist. Not genealogist, no, he's curious about the family as well, but he also enjoys actual Rocks, right? As in geology, right, right. Tell us about Gray Barn Antiques, okay? Oh, and Gray when Barn. that was founded, and what your hours are, and what you what you carry there for the researcher well, or Gray, the antiquer. Sure, Gray Barn Antiques is uh, what's become really our passion. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of a living history. We've owned it now. Uh, September was our four year anniversary there. We're a multiple dealer shop, which means we have multiple booths for mm -hmm. different vendors to display their wares in. They're not there, but the software that we have at the counter delineates among the different vendors from their transactions. Right. And they bring in what's great about a multiple dealer shop mm -hmm. is you bring from many different sources. Right. Passions, right. sources, uh, interests of any nature, and we feed into our customers' desires as yeah. well. And what days are you opening? We're again? Wednesday through Sunday. We're 10 to 5 weekdays, 10 to 5.30 on the weekends. Uh, we stay later because it's more fun to us than it is work. Uh, you right. really get to, as it were, sift through history. You yes. get to see how things were made, things were made to last. Mm -hmm. And talking about how you can trace through antiques for gene genealogy, mm -hmm. this is also where new collectors are starting collections that will be handed down to their That's descendants right. as well. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. But, and then you have some personal antiques there that, we, that families will have their initials on, monogrammed absolutely. plates and things like that. These are all clues. So go antiquing this weekend or whenever you can and go to Gray Barn Antiques. Very right. good. Love to see you out there. Okay, let's just do a quick review of the antiques that we have here. Sure. Uh, first of all, the Bible casket, which is yep. kind of grim. But protects a valuable thing. And this is, this is, the, this is the essence of genealogy, the family Bible. Yep. Okay. And then personal things, uh, like what Don has showed us this evening. 
The Elephants. Yep. And what year is this about? The Elephants, well, I'm in my mid-40s, and that's been around at least 15, 20 years prior to me. Right, okay. So, and so this is not really, it's more of a collectible then. That, it's definitely vintage. It's in the vintage era. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, over 25 years. It's not quite an antique, but it's on its way. Right. And the book ends? Art Deco, that would probably be in the 40s, you know, 40s or 50s. My wife uh, would probably say it's a little bit younger than that. Actually, right. 30s, right? Right, okay. 30s, yeah. <laughs> 30s. A little bit older than that, right? And, of course, this wheel here. This is a, this is a real three-dimensional archive. Yeah. You could transform this into a table or something. Oh, you could do that, yes, absolutely. Now, Don, before we close with these wonderful antiquities, yeah. these antiques, what could you tell the researcher, the, the genealogist or the descendant who was trying to identify a family connected to these antiques? What, what can they do? How can they go about finding out? Right. How can they identify something and do research beyond looking at the antique? Different people use different methods. For example, sometimes there'll be a note attached to the bottom or inside of a book. There may be a diary. Uh, different notes along the way. For example, even today, when my wife acquires a beautiful piece, she'll write a little note and attach it somewhere inconspicuous mm -hmm. so as to know the provenance right. of the piece. One of the things we have at our shop is a fairly significant collection of owls. We have a logo for our shop as an owl, and we have now northwards of 500 owls that people have given my wife. Yes, one, I have given her some oh, myself. Oh, yes, you have, and okay. some very well cherished. Yes. One of the nice pairs of things we received were some owl bookends. They were the, they're wood. They were the fifth anniversary gift of this woman's parents to one another. Mm -hmm. And nobody in her family seemed to want them at the time. She's also a shop owner somewhere nearby. And she said, listen, I don't want to sell these, and nobody in the family wants these, and I know how much passion you have for your collections. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd love for you to have them. So as soon as my wife received them, obviously very thankfully, she took the time to write a note about where they came from and the provenance so that that could be linked down the road to the origin. So she's almost like more than just an antique dealer, an archivist. Yes, definitely. Uh, you know, an antiques historian, archivist, you name it any way you slice it. It's somebody who appreciates where it came from and why it got there. My grandmother mm -hmm. was well-traveled, took the Queen Elizabeth II multiple times mm -hmm. and collected things wherever she would go on vacation. And I think some of these probably came into her possession through those travels. So these notations could be found on the antique itself? Usually there, or like I said, it could be a diary. And worst case, you know, you do the smart thing and talk with your relatives and say, hey, Grandma, Grandpa, what would you recommend to tell me about these wonderful pieces that you have so right. that you don't lose that history right. before it escapes you? Right. So this is another way of doing genealogical research. Absolutely. Antiques and genealogy, which has been the topic of our uh, discussion tonight on Family Historian. Well, Don, thank you so much for coming on my show. Well, thank you for having and me. And I learned a lot, and I love all these antiques around me. They're not haunting me. They're making me very, very happy. And on that note, as I say every week, remember, we are all descendants of ancient civilizations. Genealogy is your key to the history of your family. And so until next time, this is Stephen Conti wishing you the very best of luck in your research and above all, happy ancestor hunting. Good night. Mm -hmm.